Tony Katz, great to be with you. 239-9393, that is the number. Facebook, Tony Katz Radio, that is where you find me. I have discussed Andre Carson and his relationship with Louis Farrakhan, and Andre Carson has decided to get rather personal. Now, to order to, to, to share the story properly, let's go back. Because Andre Carson, the congressman from Indianapolis, is someone I'm not a fan of. And I have said, and I am on the record, I think he is guilty of very bad judgment. When he decided to attend uh, a meeting of the Muslim American Society, of which that's not my issue, and I've said that many times, I'm on the record. Uh, In uh, 2014, he did so knowing that he was uh, supposed to be on a panel. It was written into the program, printed into the program. He was going to be on a panel with a guy by the name of Mazen Mokhtar. And Mazen Mokhtar is known as a Taliban fundraiser going back to 2004. And uh, commentaries, I should say, are um, reports from the Washington Post. This is who he is. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody rationally should ever have have agreed to to go to that conference or to be on a panel with him. Andre Carson, as reported by uh, Patrick Poole at PJ Media, said, "Oh, they they just printed my name. They just printed my name. I was never scheduled to be on that panel." Oh, okay, okay. I still think it was terrible judgment. I think that if you take a look at his history, there has been nothing really done uh, that's solid for the people of Indianapolis. I would like to see them uh, vote him out of office. And I've even said I don't think I can convince Indianapolis to vote for a Republican. Maybe I can convince them to vote for a Libertarian. But okay, they're going to vote for a Democrat. Just vote for another Democrat. That's all I'm asking. Just vote for a different Democrat. And I've been having that same conversation uh, as, as we go forward. I've been having that same conversation when it was discovered that Andre Carson has been um, having meetings with Louis Farrakhan. It was reporting that there was a dinner for Hassan Rouhani, the president of Iran, and at that dinner was Louis Farrakhan, and Andre Carson still went to that dinner. He went to that dinner. Well, that started this conversation, and you've read my reporting at WIBC.com. It has been picked up by Powerline Blog. It has been quoted by Fox News over and over. And I must say that my reporting wasn't actually digging for the story. I'm not a a journalist in that regard. I'm absolutely a commentary guy. All I did was take the news reports out there and put them in an easy-to-understand form. I took the story and made it relatable to America, specifically the people of Indianapolis where I live. But it resonated. It resonated large because we know and we understand that, well, Louis Farrakhan is an anti-Semite. This isn't a debate. Louis Farrakhan is a bigot. Louis Farrakhan should be on the very fringes of society. So why is Andre Carson and Keith Ellison and other members of the Congressional Black Caucus, why are they getting together with him? Well, this got to a more fevered pitch when Tamika Mallory came into the picture. Now, Tamika Mallory is with the Women's March. Linda Sarsour, that whole group right there. And Tamika Mallory was there for this speech on Savior's Day where uh, Louis Farrakhan is talking about the satanic Jews and they're going down and the whole nonsense. You know, also known as uh, uh, the kind of speech uh, known for Louis Farrakhan is any given Tuesday. He's been doing this stuff for years and years. He's been an anti-Semite and a bigot for years, a hateful, hateful man who should have no place in public policy. Why is Tamika Mallory going? Why is Tamika Mallory defending him? Why is Carmen Perez, who's also a co-founder of, of, of the Women's March, when asked about it, saying things like, well, no leader is perfect? And if you think that's crazy, Tamika Mallory compared Louis Farrakhan to Jesus. That's, that's a bit of crazy right there. So Louis Farrakhan has been further in the news. Then bring in the information that here in Indianapolis, Andre Carson, the congressman, sits down with Fox 59, Angela Gano, and she asks him the question. She asks him point blank about Louis Farrakhan. Well, he doesn't denounce Louis Farrakhan. He then pivots to blame people like Benjamin Netanyahu for the problems. Wait, wait, wait. wait. We're talking about Louis Farrakhan and why you associate with an anti-Semite. Yes, well, Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli government aren't being kind to uh, migrants from Africa. 
okay, but what does that have to do with you and and, and Louis Farrakhan? Well, I denounce uh, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and all the phobias. He literally said all the phobias. Okay, you denounce them, so why do you still meet with uh, Louis Farrakhan? Well, in the Congressional Black Caucus, we talked to him about uh, anti-crime issues uh, and, and discrimination issues against women and things like that. You're talking to Andre Carson? I'm sorry, Andre Carson is talking to Louis Farrakhan about discrimination? He's, have you listened to him? Anti-gay, anti-white, anti-Semite. This, what can he tell you? Was he going to teach you how to do it? What does he have to teach? He then went on, did a congressman, Andre Carson, to a place called Wish TV, had the same conversation. Will not denounce, will not denounce Louis Farrakhan. That brings us to a video that was put forth by the Washington Post. And in this video, and this is in Louis Farrakhan's own words, he's being interviewed by a, by a, by a TV host, like a cable news, like a cable uh, access kind of host, right? I'm not trying to disparage, I don't know who the guy is. And, and here, listen for yourself. So, so for Brother Congressman, I do wish him well. You know, I like him, though. I, I think he's very intelligent, and he could do a lot to help the Democratic Party. <laughs> but when the he, way he went about it, I'm it, it, it was terribly wrong. Even uh, this summer, out at Rosebud, he sent you the greeting. I think he came and Congressman Carson okay. came, yeah. I believe. But both of them, when I was in Washington, visited my suite. Yeah. And, she and we sit down and talk like you and I are talking. Right. The two members of Congress he's talking about at the first there when he talks about Brother Congress, when he's talking about Keith Ellison, the Democrat from Minnesota. And then, of course, he mentions Carson, who has meeting with Louis Farrakhan in his suite. So outside of what's going on with outside of what's going on with uh, with the CBC and a lot of people who are watching on Facebook, they couldn't hear that audio. I apologize. Well, you'll, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it. So here we have Congressman Andre Carson. He has met with Louis Farrakhan as part of the Congressional Black Caucus. He has met with Louis Farrakhan outside in private. In private, he has met with Louis Farrakhan. Why? Why is this anti-Semite somebody you want to meet with? Bring in the Indy Star. Because with the Indy Star... The story takes a very strange turn because Tim Swearens does an interview, 50 minutes long, he says, with Andre Carson. And here is the quote. In a flash of anger, the congressman reserved his strongest comments during our interview for WIBC talk show host Tony Katz, who's been sharply critical of Carson recently for refusing to denounce Farrakhan. Quote from Andre Carson. I think what Tony Katz is doing on WIBC is hate speech. He's putting my life and my children's lives in jeopardy. He's jeopardizing the lives of staff members in my office. That's what Andre Carson said of me. That's what Andre Carson said of me relaying the facts to you. The question is, why did he say it? In a flash of anger, it's written in the article, which is there at IndyStar.com. The congressman reserved his strongest comments during our interview for WIBC talk show host Tony Katz, who's been sharply critical of Carson recently for refusing to denounce Farrakhan. Quote, I think what Tony Katz is doing on WIBC is hate speech. He's putting my life and my children's lives in jeopardy. He's jeopardizing the lives of staff members in my office. Now, that's the, 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 the quote right there. And I started, I looked at that, I said, oh my goodness. Putting his life in jeopardy, his family's life in jeopardy. What are you even, what is he even talking about? Because, uh, you know, hate speech, what is he saying? All I've done is taken stories that are in the Washington Post, Fox 59, Wish TV, Daily Caller, other places, and I'm talking about them. I'm sharing them. I'm, I'm compiling them. See how these things connect. 
See how he says one thing in one place and then another thing in another place. There's been a lot of deflection, t uh, commenting on exposing that level of deflection. And then I stopped because something about that quote isn't right. It's, it's, it's Malcolm Gladwell. It's blink. It's something's off. And I took a, a look at it again. Let's start from the beginning. I think what Tony Katz is doing on WIBC is hate speech. The normal talk would be, oh, he's just being a blowhard and trying to get ratings and he's just bought and paid for by the Koch brothers. It would be one of those. But no, it's not what he said. He said, I think what Tony Katz is doing on WIBC is hate speech. Not, I think what he is doing. Not what I think Tony is doing. I think what Tony Katz is doing. First, he used my full name. It's not a flowing conversation. He used my full name so people would use and, and know my, my full name. And then he says doing on WIBC so people would know it's a radio station is hate speech. We can laugh at the first part of that, right? That here's a guy who won't denounce Louis Farrakhan. It's saying I am guilty of hate speech for simply utilizing stories in press that he approves of, like the Washington Post, to prove his connection to an anti-Semite and a bigot. That's not hate speech. That's, it's, it's a lot of things. It's not hate speech. Let's not kid ourselves. But why Tony Katz and WIBC? Um, let's start with the fact that this is an attack on radio. And then the hate speech comment makes much more sense. Andre Carson is flat out attacking radio. He's trying to put pressure on me, but more importantly, he's trying to put pressure on you for listening, for being a part of what we do every single day, for sharing the stories that we're putting out there, the news that's being made to make sure that it's understandable, these connections and how they work. That's what he's doing. He's not just talking about me there. He's talking about you. He is saying to you that you are guilty of hate speech for listening to someone like Tony Katz. He's also very possibly making sure people know who I am, which is in and of itself strange. What not the right thing to do to ignore me? Right? I'm a, I'm a radio host. You're a congressman. You mentioned me by name, first name, and last name. You use a phrase like hate speech. We'll get back to that in, in a second. Secondly, the whole conversation of attacks on his family. Uh, I have never mentioned his family ever. I have never once mentioned his family. I didn't know the man was married. I didn't know the man was married. I, I didn't know he had a, a, a family. I have no idea. I have mentioned on the air Jessica Gale, who is his press secretary, because it's the press secretary. Just like I've mentioned Mark Lauder, who used to be the press secretary for Vice President Pence. Just like I've mentioned Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who's the press secretary for the president. It's not, you know, some statement was put out by Jessica Gale, press secretary for Andre Carson. That's standard operating procedure. Why would you say it like this? He's putting my life and my children's lives in jeopardy. He's jeopardizing the lives of staff members in my office. This is simply false. You're a member of Congress. This is in the news. I am reporting it on the little radio doohickey thing I do. Why is that putting your family in jeopardy? And, and, and think of how personal that is. Why did Andre Carson, why did Congressman Carson make it personal? What was the point of that? And started really getting into it. That doesn't make sense. The statement in and of itself doesn't make any sense. The comments, not only the 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 um the idea that it's hate speech, that you would use my full name, that you'd mention WIBC, that you would claim you would take it, you would make it personal. You wouldn't make it professional, you wouldn't come at me as a radio host. You made it personal to your family. Why in the world would you do that? Oh. And that's when it hit me because we sat there with myself and my, my program director, my, my executive producer, uh, producer Brian Baker. What is the point of this? And then it hit me. It hit me that what we see here and what we have here is a dog whistle. 
Well, not a not a dog whistle. This is a dog bullhorn. I want to say clearly, um, uh, and 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 with without any question, no, 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 Congressman Carson. It is not your family and your children's lives that are in jeopardy, the lives of your staff. This statement has you putting my family in jeopardy, using my name, using the station name, saying this and making it personal is the dog bullhorn to, hey, look what this guy is saying about me. I wonder if that upsets any of my supporters. This is a dog whistle. This is a dog bullhorn. That's exactly why it's here. This statement doesn't make any sense. This commentary about me is not in any way connective. It's not natural. It's not free-flowing. This was planned. This is an organized series of thoughts for a purpose. And I want you to know I take it seriously. This is the kind of stuff they used to say about President Trump. He's just whipping up the base, just whipping up his supporters. I made two phone calls today. I made one uh, to my wife, who I never talk about on air. I mean, I, I mentioned wife, and that's it. You know, I didn't talk about having a family until I moved to Indianapolis. I, I never talked about it on air. I never talked about it. People who knew me for years, they didn't know. I keep them very private. I keep my life in that way uh, private. I don't think I should be putting it out there. I made a call to her to let her know this article is out there. And then I made a call to a local security company who's coming out today. Andre Carson's family was never in jeopardy. Their father is a congressman. Commentary about what a congressman does in his relationships is part of the game. Congressman Andre Carson, as I see it, used my name, and which is okay, used the station and used this falsehood, this flat-out lie about putting his lives and children in jeopardy to tell his supporters, hey, look what he's doing to me. Maybe that's not okay. First call I made was to my wife. Second call I made was to a security company. He's raising my profile. That's another crazy part. You're supposed to ignore me. He made sure to mention me first name and last name. My station. Make this claim about his life and his children's lives in danger. Making it hyper personal. He raised my profile. And he did it for a reason. Because this is not a dog whistle. This is a dog bullhorn. This is putting my family at jeopardy. And I am acting accordingly. Understand also I'm not leaving. You can't run me out of anywhere. Maybe that's your dream. I don't know. I don't know. But you took this, Congressman Carson, to a whole new level. And still, we're not getting to the crux of the issue. Because it's not about me. It's about your association with a bigot and an anti-Semite named Louis Farrakhan. A guy who hates gay people. A guy who hates white people. A guy who nobody rationally, willingly wants to associate with. And you're still associating with him in public and in private. This isn't about me. This isn't about your lies about anybody in your family being in jeopardy. This is about you trying to deflect from the fact that you have a relationship with Louis Farrakhan. And in this interview with Tim Swearens at the Indie Star, you would not denounce him. You won't denounce your relationship with Louis Farrakhan. That's the story. Facts are not hate speech. Facts are facts. So let's make sure we have them. Louis Farrakhan is a bigot and an anti-Semite. Andre Carson has met with Louis Farrakhan publicly and privately. Andre Carson who doesn't want to have anybody know about these relationships in public, immediately pushes the dog whistle, which is to say uh, the the, uh, dog bullhorn, that I am putting his family in danger, lying through his teeth, 
when in doing so he puts my family in danger by whipping up supporters, by ginning up supporters who may want to do something about it. These are the facts. Andre Carson is not good enough for Indianapolis, and Indianapolis has to vote him out of office immediately. I'm Tony Katz.